Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the reactions between chlorine and water and chlorine with cold dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide. In both cases you need to explain why these are examples of disproportionation. OCR and AQA students should then be able to describe the benefits and risks of using chlorine in water treatment. And finally, if you're following the edXL spec, you should be able to describe the reaction between chlorine and hot alkali. OK, over the last few videos, we've been looking at the elements in group 7, which are called the halogens. Chlorine is a widely used halogen, and one of the uses is in drinking water. Small amounts of chlorine are added to drinking water to kill harmful bacteria. I'm showing you here the reaction between chlorine and water. In this reaction, we form two products, chloric 1 acid and hydrochloric acid. Chloric 1 acid is a powerful oxidizing agent and is responsible for killing bacteria. Now, if we look at the oxidation numbers, we can see that this is a redox reaction. On the left, chlorine has an oxidation number of zero as it's an element. In hydrochloric acid, the chlorine atom has an oxidation number of minus one, showing that it's been reduced. However, in chloric one acid, the chlorine atom has an oxidation number of plus one, showing that it's been oxidized. Now, a redox reaction in which atoms of the same element are oxidized and reduced is called a disproportionation reaction. And as you can see, the reaction between chlorine and water is an example of a disproportionation reaction. So as we've seen, by adding a small amount of chlorine to drinking water, we produce chloric 1 acid, which kills bacteria. And this prevents waterborne bacterial diseases, such as cholera. In conditions where chlorinated drinking water is not available, these diseases can break out. Now, there are some risks to using chlorine in drinking water. Firstly, chlorine is a toxic gas and has to be handled carefully at water treatment plants. Secondly, there is a possibility that chlorine in water can react with naturally occurring hydrocarbons, for example from decaying materials. And the chlorinated hydrocarbons produced could increase the risk of cancer in humans. Now, I should point out that this is a tiny risk and the health benefits of chlorinated drinking water far outweigh any problems. Now chlorine has a relatively low solubility in water, so only a relatively low concentration of products can form. I'm showing you here the reaction between chlorine and cold dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide. In this reaction, a much greater level of chlorine can react. And again, this is a disproportionation reaction. We produce sodium chloride, in which the chlorine atom has an oxidation number of minus one. We also produce sodium chlorate 1, in which the chlorine atom has an oxidation number of plus 1. Now, the chlorate 1 ion is a powerful oxidizing agent, and the solution made in this reaction is used as household bleach. OK, now if you're following the edXL spec, you need to be able to describe the reaction between chlorine and hot alkali. In the reaction I'm showing you here, the alkali sodium hydroxide is cold. Under cold conditions, the chlorate 1 ion is stable. However, under hot conditions, the chlorate 1 ion undergoes a further disproportionation reaction, and I'm showing you that here. In this case, the chlorate 1 ion has formed the chlorate 5 ion plus the chloride ion. In the chlorate 1 ion, chlorine has an oxidation number of plus 1. In the chlorate 5 ion, the chlorine has an oxidation number of plus 5, showing that oxidation has taken place. And in the chloride ion, the chlorine has an oxidation number of minus 1, showing that reduction has taken place. So here's the overall equation for the reaction between chlorine and hot aqueous sodium hydroxide. In the next video, we look at the reaction between group 1 halides and concentrated sulfuric acid.